What's your name, where are you from, and why are you here today? Hi, I'm Taylor, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. A beautiful accent. Adam, also from Nashville. Your accent's not as beautiful, sir. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm gonna have to call you on that. I'm a Minnesotan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Things like A, and I'm from Lower Canada, <laughs> don't you know? <laughs> All right, well, speaking of speaking out, you guys both are, are uh, pretty opinionated about Donald Trump. So what, what's your favorite thing about Donald Trump? Um, I like that he speaks his mind, and whether or not people like it, he just tells the truth. That's what I like, honesty. And Adam, what's your least favorite thing about Donald Trump? <laughs> You're tired of the tweets, man. <laughs> uh, a man that has too much access to a keyboard can get a little tiresome at times. But <laughs> So about what he's speaking his mind about, there must be something in it that you do enjoy, right? So what specifically that he's saying do you support? Um, I mean, politically, I'm... I'm not really a political person, to be honest. I mean, I just, I'm not upfront about, you know, politics, but um, I mean, him as just being in the forefront of media, um, I think he's kind of a funny person to watch. <laughs> so it's entertaining, actually. <laughs> okay, so as a non political person in a president, you're looking for entertainment value. Is that well, no, not in a president necessarily, but I mean, he is fun to watch. So. <laughs> did you vote for Trump? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Because he's entertaining. No, not because of that. Okay. So what was what was your better reason then? Um, I like that he's for national security and that he's willing to stand up uh, for that. Just you know, overall, and um, yeah, that's what I liked about him. That he's okay. just kind of honest and he's for America. <laughs> okay, and Adam. What is your greatest fear or, or downside that you see from Donald Trump's tweets? Um, I mean, mainly I, I just, you know, just unrelented uh, barrage of, of just, you know, opinions that, that, uh, that kind of make, you know, draw some fear to me a little bit. But, uh, you know, I mean. What's the fear? Well, I mean, look at this Korean situation that's going on and sort of poking the bear a little bit. Wait, but for national security, you don't feel safer that he has the biggest red button? <laughs> I don't know. I feel safe. I don't have any problems right now. Well, so. I mean, like you said, you know, he, he is at least approaching a diplomatic solution, so I, I appreciate that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I mean, just unfringed opinions is a little bit scary because people take that, you know, for just the text that it is and there's always much more information that is behind just a one or two sentence opinion. Yeah, I okay. feel like people, um, I don't know, they just sort of like on media and everything, it's just, it's just media and I feel like there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes um, and I feel like he's just bashed a lot in the media um, and I feel like he honestly, I, I feel like he has like a common greater good for you know what he wants for America so it's kind of cool now we're at the point where like the more you get attacked in the media the more the American people like you right <laughs> but you guys you guys both mentioned national security I gotta say the thing about North and South Korea getting to some truce getting to, towards some peace there very positive but in terms of what he's done in Syria this past weekend what do you guys think about that and how it relates to national security I don't know. I don't really have a comment about that. <laughs> well, Trump recently uh, just announced bomb strikes on Syria in uh, response to the alleged chemical weapons attack last week. Do you think this is going to be making America more or less safe? I mean, to me, I, I mean, what's going on in Syria, you're looking at mass genocide and, uh, you know, having a reaction to that. How can you not, as a human being, have a reaction to that? So. I, I mean, I commend him for, for reacting to, to something that's unjust. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Being justice, that's, that's what I commend him for, too. I mean, so when, when he became president, and you know, like when anybody enlists in the military, we swear an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States. So, does it bother you that what he's doing in Syria without congressional approval is unconstitutional? I don't know, what is he doing without congressional approval exactly? The bomb strikes in Syria. So he's telling our military to send out bombs without whose approval? The approval of Congress. Okay, so he has to have Congress's approval before, because I'm pretty, I mean, I thought that the president had pretty much the say-so to do something like that. <laughs> well, un unfortunately, that's, that's the reality because we haven't had a president who follows the Constitution a long time, right, or has actually respected its, its restrictions on what should be restrictions 
on foreign policy. But Adam, like you said, that it was it was a it was a response to an injustice. But let, let me ask you a question, just to put it in perspective, because this was a, an alleged chemical attack that killed 42 people, right? And that that in and of itself would be pretty bad. But it's half a million who have died in the seven-year civil war in Syria, and the American intervention more than the bomb strikes have been through foreign uh, funding or through funding uh, a foreign terrorist organizations because they're standing up to the Assad regime. And the effect of this foreign policy that Trump has perpetuated is funding terrorism because it opposes people that we don't like because they may have committed a war crime with a chemical weapons attack that we don't have sufficient proof of. Do you guys see that there's any problem there and that this might make us less safe as a country, that this might be at least working us towards World oh, War III? Politics. Uh, You're politicking right now. I, I can feel it. <laughs> well, I, there's pros and cons to the whole situation, whether or not he, I don't know, I just, I feel I mean, like. To me, it's tough. You can't, you can't sit behind, like, having a political institution that, that has, you know, barriers and limitations to be able to what you can and can't do. I, I mean, it's tough. It's, it's a tough situation for anyone to approach. There's not going to be a right answer. There's always, we, we live in a world of gray. Everyone wants it to be black and white. Everyone wants to approach the situation and say, this is what we should do. But in reality, when you sit back and think of what happens, it's always gray. You know, it affects the people in Syria. It affects the people in the United States. You know, we want to react. We want to do something to help those people. Well, if there was something, there was a much greater tragedy going on in the United States. It was killing more people than than we're seeing in these alleged chemical weapons attacks in Syria and and Donald Trump was doing nothing about it stuff that happens uh, like that yeah well let me just point out one and see if this changes your perspective on this a little bit because you know I'm a veteran and we have uh, you know I was in Fallujah in 2004 in Iraq and we have an epidemic of veteran suicides in this country so we have 20 at least committing suicide every single day and instead of doing something about that, instead of making the treatments that are effective for that, legal for veterans, Donald Trump wants to send missiles into Syria. Do you think that represents a, a little bit of a warped for priority? You know, you have, you have institutions like the, the Veterans Association that, that is out there, you know, trying. Hold on, we had a Cardi B site in here. All right. <laughs> Like, like institutions like the Veterans Association that are they're supposed to be in place for, you know, people like you or people that have experienced PTSD, um, you know, those institutions have, have not had the highest success. Like, I agree, yes, that needs help. But, you know, relating it to a situation that someone reacted to, like, like there's always going to be things that you can poke at, you know, things that, that need help. Um, you know, I totally agree. You know, veterans need to be able to find ways to uh, approach the history that they have experienced when it comes to things like PTSD. Um, but, you know, comparing that to Syria is maybe a bit of a stretch. <laughs> well, if you're willing to send missiles into Syria, but you're not willing to give veterans the freedom to pursue treatment how they want here in the United States, I think that would be a major contradiction that would expose a lot of hypocrisy and show you that there's something else behind government than what they say. But I just want to wrap up with two questions here. Well, it's anti-politics. No, because my point of all of this is that, well, I won't, I won't even cut to the point here because I want to see if you guys want to have the final word here. I'm going to ask you two questions. First of all, because, because you guys have started with like polar opposite opinions on Donald Trump here. First of all, do you trust government? I think, yeah, for the most part. To me, it's an establishment that you have to approach with a, a you know, skepticism. You know, you should continually to a challenge your government and be willing to, you know, scrutinize. Well, hold on, I'll just cut you off because you're trying to give the opposite answer from her without pissing her off right now, aren't you? Because you, you don't trust government. No, I mean, I don't trust a lot of things. But, like, you know, you can't just wholeheartedly trust something that, you know, just saying, oh yeah, that's big brother, they're, they're looking out for me. They're probably not always looking out for you. They have their own vested interests. You know, you, you've got to approach situations as a situation. Uh, everything needs to, you need to gain all of the information. That's the challenge. We live in a world that information's at our fingertips. We have the internet, we have YouTube telling us, you know, all kinds of skepticisms happening. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not. You need to be able to take that information in, assess it, and come to a, a, you know, a good educated decision. 
that's the kind of thing that'll really help us out. Is that, that sounds like a very, I'm going to cut you off, because that sounds like a very political answer, doesn't it? Doesn't sound like a Donald Trump kind of tweet answer. All right, so very last question. Does Donald Trump make you trust government more or less? <laughs> I, I'm still approaching it with skepticism. <laughs> and Cardi B? <laughs> No, no more, no less. Uh, I mean, I, I just don't really have like a huge opinion about him as far as, I mean, I think he's doing a pretty good job in presidency. I, I mean, I don't follow up with a lot of um, his social media. I don't follow him on Twitter. I don't see what he says. I don't get into all of that. So I don't really have a comment on that. So. You're missing out on all the entertainment value. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Taylor, Adam. You guys have been great, absolutely. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.